Uh, my intent is for this to be the one time I ever really talk about this, because I don't think a video like this one is what my channel is for. I make things for fun, and I usually hope that other people enjoy them too, but this topic isn't fun, and I think enjoying this video would be a bit of a red flag. Uh, I have something called major depression. That sentence is a lot more straightforward than the process of learning the information it communicates was. I took a psychology class in high school, and the plot twist is that I'm mentioning that to explain why I wouldn't have used the word depressed if I was trying to pin down my mood at that point in my life. Depressed wasn't a mood, it was a diagnosis, and it was one I didn't have. Also in high school, a doctor ended up asking me a bunch of questions, and then telling me that what I said was consistent with something called major depression. So, uh, whoops. Being diagnosed with Big Sad barely impacted me at the time, really. It gave me a point of entry in terms of seeing a psychologist who did agree that that was what was going on. But I just sort of threw the word into the pile of descriptive words that I knew technically applied to me, but that I didn't put a lot of thought into. What really shook things up in terms of how I thought about what I was dealing with, oddly enough, was filling out my job application for Target about a year ago. Since they have to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act, they ask you when you apply whether you have a disability. My gut reaction to that question was no. For some reason though, I ended up looking at the actual block of text that they were using to define disability, and depression was explicitly included in the list of things that counted. So I checked off yes, and then I and then and then I thought it was weird that nobody ended up trying to clarify which disability I had after the application went through, but but that's off topic. This time I couldn't just f take new information and file it away as a technically accurate description without thinking about it. I could gloss over being called depressed, but I had to actually process being called disabled. I still sort of haven't gotten used to the idea, actually. But the line of thinking is helping me figure out ways to articulate things that I, I couldn't really pin down before. If you break your hand, you can't use your hand, obviously. But if you break your arm, you also can't really use your hand. The body is a system that relies on parts that connect to each other. So, like, why did it take me so long to notice that certain mental parts are also connected? It's one thing to say, oh, I guess I have a mood disorder. Maybe I'll be sad about nothing in particular sometimes. And maybe I'll feel nothing when I should be having fun. And that's all just the depression thing. But it's not that simple, you know? I can miss a deadline, and my first thought is usually, huh, well, I've been using my time poorly, and I guess that means I'm stupid, what is wrong with me? It takes a bit more effort to trace things back from the thing that I'm seeing to the thing that I know about. Meeting a deadline seems like it should just be something that I can do. My hand feels fine. But to meet a deadline, you have to work on the project. To work on the project, you have to be motivated, even if it's just by the deadline itself. And to be motivated, you have to be able to process risks and rewards in a way that actually makes sense to you. And when rewards feel hollow, because you have a mood disorder, the whole chain of cause and effect breaks down. My arm is broken. Uh, speaking of risks, depression has this neat built-in feature where you can just shut down for seemingly no reason, like entirely. There's this state you can get into where time feels wrong, it, it's physically difficult to move, and you're not really even thinking about anything. And that state is terrifying. 
avoiding it is one of the only goals that I can consistently identify and focus on on a day-to-day -day basis. Latching onto distractions looks very similar to wasting time, but I always have to wonder if I was ever going to use that time for the thing that I should actually be working on, or if that time was just going to go nowhere anyway, and all I did was pick having some entertainment over having a breakdown. I guess the point of this video is that when I say I want to do something, and then a lot of time passes and it hasn't happened, it's not because I was lying. I probably still want to do the thing I was talking about, but it's not a straightforward process for me, unfortunately. I can hit a brick wall on the most mundane things for absolutely no reason. And the kicker is that there isn't really a way to fix that.